today we're going up to buy the new CRF 300 Rally. Uh, found it on Facebook. I called a guy and I said I want to buy it. Just that simple. All right, guys. Catch you on the road. I've got my co-pilot with me today, the Empress. Hi. <laughs> we're driving three hours to get a bike that normally I should be able to just run a Scranton and grab. Whoa! Whoa! Okay, just a dump truck. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> we're a mile from Nothing the house. Nothing to see here. Well, you know, I heard that most accidents happen a mile from the house, so we almost moved. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Dumb, I know. It's dumb terrible. dad jokes. Yeah, dumb dad jokes. So anyway, so I've had my name on a couple lists. I had uh, a dealership, they were going to call me if a DRZ400 came in. I don't really want to, these DRZ400 are a little more wild. And they're old technology, they're typically carbureted. I kind of like the idea of fuel injection. I like the idea of electric start, obviously. That's why I gotta get rid of, I'm getting rid of the XT because it doesn't have electric start. I also, I wound up being a toss up between three bikes and that was the CRF 300L, the CRF 300L Rally, and the KLX, which is the Kawasaki, the KLX um, 300, I think that's L2 because the R is the off-road, not legal one. Uh, I was watching a lot of videos, watching things, reading up on things, and everybody says the CRF has the light suspension that's not adjustable, and everything being equal, the Kawasaki probably edges it out a little bit just because it's got an adjustable suspension. People like that idea of an adjustable suspension, where I don't think that's going to really matter to me all that much, especially if I'm mostly riding it on the road. This CRF rally came up which is a little bit more road mannered because it has a fairing, it has a little windshield on it, cuts down on, on it gives you a little bit more wind protection, which is something I do enjoy. Cause I got, kinda got spoiled with that with the Harley. So we're about halfway there and I, I was kind of decided I was going to go with the KLX 300 um, just because the suspension's adjustable. Okay, that's a, that's a plus. It's a couple pounds lighter. That's a plus. I just thought it'd be, it's a couple hundred bucks more too than the, than the base CRF 300. But I, I wind up talking to the, uh, call the guy up. I call him up in about June. And, you know, I talk to the guy, oh yeah, we'll, we'll put you on the list. Oh, oh wow, you're number one on the list. We're probably looking late fall. We're probably looking at, you know, maybe September, October, or late November. I said, cool. So right sometime around August, I call him up and it's like, yeah, I don't know. Uh, we'll have to check. And he comes back and says, oh yeah, you are on the list. Well, I'm still number one on the list, which is great. And then in September, I call him up. I said, oh yeah, we got you here. You're number three on the list. I'm like, what? And he says, yeah, well, we had one come in, but we won't have more coming in until late November. I said, but I was I was number one. How'd I get the number three? What? He says, well, what do you mean? He says, I I said, I keep getting bumped. How come I how come I get bumped on the list? Oh, I'll have to check with, with Kathy. I'll ever call you. Well, Kathy never called, so I started hunting again. And that's why we're driving out three hours of Massachusetts to see what we can find. So, well, we found it already, but... That's why I'm driving all the way out to Massachusetts. There's just doesn't seem to be much available. I was shocked to see this one on Facebook. So off we go. We're still driving. We're, we're getting into fall time now. And I know you were panning around and showing some of the leaves and stuff. There's a nice view right there. Some of the fall leaves, the flaming foliage on the lake right there next to you. Wow, gorgeous. So it's a nice casual ride. We're having a good time, aren't we, honey? Yep. All right. And the reason for the road trip. Yeah, that dealership, he said he only got one of these in. And they've, uh, they're really worried about how many bikes they're gonna be getting in till late fall, I guess November even. So, I'm glad I snapped this one up. Sharp bike, what do you think? What do you think, honey? It's, I had no idea what to expect, but this wasn't it. I had, I just didn't know. <laughs> but I like it, it's nice. <laughs> I'll be able to ride about a mile on it before I have to get off because, well, there's no seat, really, to speak of. Look yeah. At, look, at all, look at all that 
I know. I didn't bother Dicker. You know, I, lo I love to uh, negotiate on pricing and stuff, but there's no negotiating on these right now at all. And, but he really didn't gar gouge me on uh, setup and all that stuff. I think it was fair. I think it was a good deal. Brand new bike. Uh, he asked me if I had any questions. <laughs> I said, I don't know. I can't think of any. So we'll, we'll learn the bike. We'll learn it as we get it off and ride it around a little bit. All right. All right. Are we ready to get saddled up and start heading back? Heading back. Hey, guys. It's the day after I picked up the uh, CRF 300 Rally. I'm pretty excited. But I'm also 59. So, you know, I got to do a responsible thing. I got to check over the owner's manual. And it comes in a cool little packet with some Velcro. And I'm going to look it over a little bit. And if there's anything exciting, I'll let you know. Okay, I got the you and your motorcycle riding tips. Visibility gear, tells you all that kind of stuff. This is just basically a book on riding a motorcycle. Pretty generic thing, but here it is. This is the manual for a CRF Rally. 2021 model. All right, and looking through it. Operation guide, vehicle safety, maintenance, troubleshooting information, and specifications. Let's go to maintenance. Oh, before riding, make sure you're physically fit, mentally focused, and free of alcohol or drugs. Yeah, that's a good idea. Always wear a helmet. <laughs> I'm going to on this on a street bike. I usually didn't just because I figured if you're splat into the road, you're in trouble anyway. Don't drink and use drugs and ride. Make yourself easy to see, be alert. This is another book. I mean, the whole front of this manual is about safety. It's just about a redo of that. Okay, it's got safety labels on the bike and it shows me where they all are. Safety precautions, helmet. Riding, break in. First 300 miles of running. Follow these guidelines to ensure your vehicle future reliability and performance. Avoid full throttle starts and rapid acceleration. Avoid hard braking and rapid downshifts. Ride conservatively. Brakes, observe the following guidelines. Avoid excessive hard braking and downshifting. Sudden braking reduces the vehicle stability. Where possible, reduce speed before turning. Otherwise, you risk sliding out. Well, the braking period just says during the first 300 miles. I thought it was six. Loading, carrying extra weight. Eh, wow. This shows me everything. Clutch, brake fluid, right side cover, engine oil level. Ooh, it's got the instrument display. Select button and set button. So I can select with the one and set with the other. I couldn't see that when I was looking at it. It's out of the red zone with the engine tag. Display check. Total and trip meter. Trip A and B and stopwatch. Hmm. Odometer is there. Then trip meter A and trip meter 2. Well, that's kind of cool. It's got a stopwatch thing. Fuel mileage, display mode, blah, blah, blah. These are all those things that you learn on a bike after you get on it for about two hours and you know everything about it anyway. The instrumentation is much better than the Kawasaki, I will give it that. The importance of maintenance. Oh boy, not that speech again. Times a thousand miles, 0. 0.6, so 600 miles. This is, this is fun. They've got a frequency gizmo here, every thousand. <laughs> it's an 8,000 mile oil change interval, according to this. The interest of safety, have a stranger do it. At your Honda dealer. You know what, that's probably good if depending on your Honda dealership. If they're good mechanics, you're great. Otherwise, uh, spark plug every 16,000. I is probably inspect, clean, adjust, lubricate. You know, if I'm gonna take a spark plug out, I'm just putting a new one in. They're like uh, probably eight bucks for the best spark plug you could buy for this thing. I don't know, maybe maybe it's 20 bucks. I still gonna just change it at, instead of inspecting it at 8,000 miles, I'm just gonna change it. Yeah, okay. So, first 600 miles, change the oil out. So I thought 600 miles was the break-in, but I guess the break is only 300 miles according to the book. So it's a good thing I looked in the book. All right, I had 300 miles of riding conservatively. Nobody wants that. Okay, maintenance records in here. Well, this book ain't horrible. I like it. Okay, that's going to come in handy. I'm going to keep it in my briefcase for now. All right, guys, picked up the bike two days ago. Yeah, it's crazy. I have not ridden it yet. I haven't started it yet, but I finally got to it. Now I'm going to take a little video and uh, look this thing over a little bit. Well, it's obviously brand new. These guys seem like really nice to deal with. North's services in, uh, where is it, Lenox, Massachusetts. Anyway, like the guy, Chris. I talked to Chris down there 
really like them. Uh, immediately looking at it, I don't see anything I don't like. This doesn't bother me at all. I'll leave that right on there and put my license plate on. That's one of the things I got to do next. The one thing I do want to do is, is rock it up and see how the oil level looks. I got it in lock. Oh, there we go. I think that make it make a difference. Oh, there we go. I got to push down on it. If I turn it on, ooh, bells and whistles. Mile is zero. That's pretty neat. I like seeing mile zero. I can push this button. That's trip A. Trip B has got one tenth of a mile on it. So I guess I was pushing it around. But right now it is actually at mile zero and that's pretty neat. And they give me a half a tank of gas. Got a nice little gas gauge on this side. Got a neutral light. I wonder what happens if I hit that shifter. Ooh, goes to one and then that shows up right over here. That's kind of neat. Uh, get her back in neutral. Got her in second. There we go. Easy to do with my foot. So that's kind of nice. Got the key on. I guess I'll be turning that off for the moment. Um, I like the looks of the bike. It is It is kind of, it's a grandpa dual sport, and I'm a grandpa, so that's what we're going to roll with. But really, I just, man, I might just sit around and look at the thing all day. <gasps> oh, is that a scratch already? It's got a dig in it. Nope. Is it a dig? Nah, it's just some dirt. Phew, that was close. Nobody wants to scratch on their dual sport. So I'm going to check out, that's the oil site. You can look in there and see your oil. Right now it looks really, well, I don't see any oil, but it is leaning on the stand. So if I roll it over, hopefully not too far. There it is. Okay. I was starting to think the oil wasn't going to show up, but it did. I'll learn all this stuff about this thing here as we go. Water cooled. It is fuel injected. So yeah, there's no place to turn off a pet cock like the old days. No place to reach down and pull out the uh, choke or the enricher, whatever you guys want to call it. It's got the two weird headlights. I don't know what the two headlight thing's about, but it's like two. Oh, you can't see them. I'll have to take another film of it. They're asymmetrical. So when I turn on the key, I don't know if they come on. Yeah, the one does come on. Okay. That's like the extra high beam, I guess. High beam on one side and low on the other. That's kind of neat. Oh, what am I seeing up here? Okay, that's pretty rugged right there for holding the windshield. It's all a different thing. It's like the windshield's not hooked to, like a lot of times they're hooked right to the handlebars and they follow the handlebars. This is separate. The whole headlight scenario, everything comes off separate from the head of the bike. I think it's about time to take it for a ride, don't you think? That was kind of an abrupt ending, but that's okay. Thanks for watching to the end. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.